Hi folks, today I'm going to cover how I replaced this with that. I have this sliding gate which has a control panel that seems to be broken. I couldn't find any damage or damage capacitors in it so I don't know how to fix it. Possibly it's the humidity that kills this controller. So what is the sliding gate consists of? We have here a transformer that uh, transforms the mains to 24 volts AC. We have a DC motor that drives the gate. We have an install switch and we have a remote control which acts as a switch in our case. So what I was came up with that we have the AC voltage here we could use capacitors and diodes to make it DC voltage to drive the motor we can drive the motor with this cheap Chinese motor driver and uh, with a DC to DC converter we can drive an Arduino that controls the motor driver so I have already made the schematics for it it turns out it's a little bit more complicated than I first thought all what is left from the sliding door is the transformer power supply which will provide 24 volt AC, not shown in this diagram, and we have the DC motor built in the unit. Other than that, we need to rebuild the whole unit. First of all, we need the AC to DC converter. Here you can see a bridge rectifier with a capacitor that will provide 24 volt DC for the motor, uh, and we also need another power for the control unit, so there is a DC to DC converter that will provide 5 volts for the control unit. Of course we have the control unit that will control the H bridge. This is the motor driver. We also have an indicator lamp that will be switched on and off with this relay. We have measured that the control LED is from 24 volt AC. What else we have here? we have an action button which is the remote control for the sliding gate we have an external unit that will switch on this circuit so in our schematic this is a switch we also have uh, the end stop switches which are also switches in our schematics we have a photo gate that will tell us when someone is in the way of the closing door we also have a rotation sensor built in the motor, so it's kind of an optical sensor for the rotation that will uh, go up and down frequently so we can measure the exact position of the motor. And this way we can tell in which position the sliding gate is right now. This will be very useful to slow down the motor before closing the door entirely. Let's see how it looks like in the actual implemented unit. So first of all we have the mains input and output for the transformer protected with this fuse. The transformer will connect it here with the 24 volt AC power which is rectified by this bridge rectifier and smooths that with this capacitor to have a 24 volt AC that will goes into the motor driver. We have the 24 volt AC to be appear in the terminals but is fused with this fuse uh, for the external power of the photo gate and uh, other uh, active parts that will need power. We have here this DC to DC converter which also receives the, the 24 volt DC that will convert the power to 5 volts. So here we have all the terminals which was shown in the picture before and we have the control unit here which is an Arduino Mini. This part is also protected with the fuse in case I screw up something. So let's see how I build this and afterwards we will test it. So I've already built this small unit which has the bridge rectifier and the capacitor in it. 
and the protective fuses. We can test the motor with this. I have already resoldered these points and I will add this non-conductive heat plate before screwing this heatsink here. The next thing I want to do with this to switch the side of this puppy is to make this thing a bit, little bit more one-sided. The next step is to cut a piece from this prototyping board that will fit in this box and organize everything to have a nice layout inside the box. I make here a rough arrangement but first of all I will align the terminals according to my plan. Now as I have a basic idea about the layout I would like to form the circuit as these terminals will need positive and negative leads and I will form here positive and negative lines and these terminals also need pull-up resistors so I will start with the pull-up resistors. These are all the components we need, so I can start soldering all the traces. Now the only tricky thing is that this motor driver needs to be connected with a ribbon cable. That will, that will be the last I will soldering. I'm ready with the soldering job, now I will make some tests if everything was connected correctly. I've made marking white arrow for both in the microcontroller and the board. Theoretically it's possible to put it in another way so just don't mix it up. I will put it in its place but uh, first of all I will remove the fuse for now 
for testing and measuring things for the first time. I made a small testing application for the microcontroller to test the functionalities and downloaded the application to my Android tablet so I can monitor the serial communication from the testing software. So let's go offside and make some tests. 45, 46 volts AC and after the bridge rectifier is supposed to receive 33 volts DC. So let's power up the things with this fuse. I've connected the lamp, the motor, the NSTOS switches and the rotation detector. Let's see what we can see in the terminal. In the field test I was facing with several problems. The indicator lamp was not going well. The ASTOS switches were configured incorrectly. The motor was not working. And I have serious software problems as well. So I've decided to create a labor setup to test all the functionalities separately. Ok, in the field tests I have some serious problems, but I don't give up. In the next episode you will find out how I'm going to fix these problems. So stay tuned, thank you for watching, bye bye.